Hi, I'm Nicole Gagner, coming to you with another art video from my studio in Bismarck, North Dakota. Um, so in the past couple of videos, we have experimented with making art with things around our house. Today, I'm gonna show you a couple really simple watercolor techniques. So if you have any kind of watercolor supplies at all, you will be able to uh, paint with them based on the things I'm gonna show you. Um, so I have a variety of pan watercolors and liquid watercolors. You could use either of those. Um, if you've got watercolor pencils or watercolor crayons, those are great also. I'm also gonna show you some techniques that you can do with salt on wet watercolor and how you can use a white crayon for wax resist, but those are not mandatory if you don't have uh, salt your food probably doesn't taste very good. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but if you don't have salt or if you don't have white crayons, but you do have watercolor and you have some watercolor paper, you can definitely make these work today. So I am using um, 140 pound watercolor paper. Um, any brand is probably fine as long as at the bottom, it says that it's 140 pound weight. What that means is um, the roll that it's on weighs 140 pounds. So the bigger the number down there, the thicker and heavier uh, the watercolor is going to be um, the kind that I'm using happens to be cold press. So the roller isn't hot. The roller is cold. So it might be a little bit more bumpy paper. Hot press tends to be a little bit smoother. Both of those work great for watercolor. I actually kind of like hot press a little um, less than cold press. I like the bumpiness, um, but it's just a personal preference thing. They both work great. Um, and the reason that I really like the 140 pound weight or higher is um, it tends not to buckle up as much. Um, it tends to stay flat and hold your water a little bit better. Um, but one thing that you can do to prevent your watercolor paper from um, buckling is actually taping the edges down with masking tape. So that's one extra supply that you might wanna grab. Um, so I will let you grab your paints, your papers, your brushes. Um, you wanna grab a paper towel also for cleaning off your brush um, and maybe for blotting up any extra water, things like that, um, and some clean water. Um, I My water doesn't look clean because I reuse my uh, paint brush cups until they are so uh, gross that you can't <laughs> even uh, tell anymore and then I finally toss them out. Um, but you could use just any cup that you aren't going to reuse again. Um, don't drink out of a cup after you've put paint to water in it. Um, watercolor is te technically non-toxic, but it's just a good habit to be in that anytime you use a water cup for paint that you don't uh, use it again uh, for drinking. So grab all those and I will show you what I'm working on down on my desk. Thanks. All right. So now you've got your watercolor paper, your watercolors, brushes, clean water, everything like that that you need. Um, so the next thing I'm doing now is I'm taping down the edges of my watercolor paper here. This is a little bit like um, something called stretching your watercolor paper, except that traditionally stretching is done with wet watercolor paper, and then you use a special uh, kind of tape that works when it's wet to hold it down. In this case, uh, we're not gonna worry about that. We'll just put it down when it's dry, because uh, masking tape, of course, doesn't work when it's wet. Um, but we'll just try to make sure it's nice and smooth, um, and then it'll stay down like this. So the next thing we're gonna do after we get our edges all taped down, I wanna grab a Sharpie. Um, if you don't have a Sharpie, you could do this with a pencil. Um, just don't use anything that's water soluble. If I did this with like a Bic pen or something, it will all wash away. A pencil will kind of wash away too, but it'll kind of show you where, you're want, where you want your lines to be and you could paint over that darker. Um, but the nice thing about using a Sharpie here is that I could paint right over the top of it and nothing that I draw will disappear. So this first line here is gonna be our horizon line. So what we're gonna be doing here is a nice night sky scene. And I like using this as a jumping off point for um, mixing colors and really playing around with things and getting super creative. Um, so if you wanna be a little bit different, if you don't wanna do a night sky scene necessarily, you don't have to. Um, you could do something um, totally different and use some of these uh, watercolor mixing techniques that we're learning here. Um, but what I'm starting now is my horizon line. So of course I keep my, my horizon line a little bit closer 
uh, to the bottom of the paper. I try not to put it up too high because then I won't have room for my sky up here. And then in silhouette, I want to start some trees. So the word silhouette just means it's a dark outline. Um, if you see somebody's face in silhouette, you don't see all of the details of their face. You just see the outline of maybe their nose or their ears or things like that. So my trees don't have any little details inside of them. They're all filled in in black. Um, it's almost like I'm seeing the trees shadows or something. Now you'll notice here, I have all of my trees starting at the horizon line. That doesn't necessarily happen in nature. Sometimes trees might start a little bit below the horizon line. These ones maybe are on the other side of the horizon line, but some of these might dip below a little bit. And trees in nature aren't perfectly straight, so don't stress about making them perfect. They're also not necessarily all the same height or all the same space apart. So you might wanna have some that are a little bit shorter, some that have a little bit of a gap. So when I draw my trees, I'm just starting with the trunk line here. Some of them might be a little bit thicker. Um, and then I'm just kind of feathering out little shapes from the side of it. Your trees might be a little bit more filled in or uh, maybe your trees are even thinner and skinnier. Totally up to you how you want your trees to look. Uh, this is kind of a, a piney night sky scene that I'm working on here, but if your trees are a little bit different, that's all right too. I'm not gonna stress too much about these trees though. They're just giving a little bit of context for my sky that I'm gonna start painting in a little bit. But you could think about what else you might wanna add in silhouette, maybe if you wanted to add a little house shape over here. Um, you just wanna remember that this is all gonna be filled in. So anything that I leave blank, like I left the little window of my house blank there, but that means that I'm gonna paint right over the top of it and that might have some of my sky color showing through. So if I didn't want that, I would just fill that all in completely. All right, so I've got all of my trees sketched here. The next thing I wanna do, if I have white crayons, the thing that we can do with white crayons, it's pretty cool, it's almost like a little magic trick, where you color in, it'll be hard to see here, um, maybe I'll do a couple in yellow here so that you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. I'm not drawing stars necessarily, although you absolutely could. I'm just kind of filling in little white dots here because to me, when I look up at the sky, uh, a lot of times they just kind of look like shimmery little white dots. And I'm not trying to get them too close together. Um, in the night sky, they're you know not perfectly evenly spaced either though. So some might be kind of close together. Some might be a little bit further apart. You could even grab a gray crayon here and just fill it in lightly. Now, if I just left this like this and painted over it, my moon would get all filled in, which is not what I want. So maybe I wanna color it in with a little bit of yellow. And then if I want the rest of it to stay white, I'll color over it really hard. Um, anywhere that you want to stay white, that's what your wax your waxy crayon is good for. This is actually a technique called wax resist. So anywhere that you have covered with your crayon, maybe I'll have some little shiny moon lines around it here. Anywhere that you've covered with your crayon, the wax is not gonna let the water sit there. So it's gonna repel the water and the watercolor is not going to stick. Now, if you get your watercolor really, really sticky and inky, it could stick there. But if you have nice uh, flowy wet watercolor, it won't stick to anything waxy. So go ahead and fill that in really good. If I don't uh, draw hard enough, if I just draw really light, it's not gonna put a nice thick coat of the waxy crayon on it. So I wanna color nice and hard, but I don't wanna fill my sky up with too many stars because if I fill my whole sky up with crayon, my watercolor is not gonna have anywhere to stick to. So go ahead, get your stars going, and in just a second we will start painting. Okay, so once you've got all of your waxy uh, stars applied and you've drawn your entire horizon line, the next thing we're gonna do is with clean water, um, grab a relatively big brush. It doesn't have to be giant. Um, I'm using, this is about a half an inch brush here. I'm gonna get it soaked with water and I'm just gonna brush water all across my sky. Um, if you have a spray bottle, that's something that you can keep on hand too. But for right now, I want enough control that I can get it wet right down to my horizon line, but I'm gonna stop there because I don't want my sky colors to bleed down onto my horizon with my land. So I'm gonna get my whole sky wet. Um, you can't see it really, but I'm not leaving any puddles. I'm just brushing an even layer of water 
across the whole thing. And then once I've got all of that wet, now is the time that we could start adding color. But before I start that, I wanna talk about the different types of paint that you might be using here. So there are um, a few different types of watercolor paints here. One that I have here, it's called pan watercolor. So this is where the, um, the watercolors are dried in the pan. So to get them restarted, you've gotta wet your brush and rub it on the watercolor. And then once you've rubbed it enough to kind of pick up some color, you can dot it into the sky and you'll see how those colors just kind of move around. Now, one thing that's really important with pan watercolor like this is if you wanna switch colors, you have to wash out your brush really well before you switch over to another color. So this is a good time to maybe have two uh, cups of water because if I start washing out my brush a bunch of times and then I'm going back to re-wet my brushes here, um, I might start putting dirty water on my brush. So you can have two different cups, one for washing and one for the clean water to apply back um, to, to get your palette wet. And if you want to do any mixing, the lid is perfect for this. Depending on, um, a lot of pan watercolor sets look different, but um, you can usually use the lid to mix up colors. So what I'll do here, I'll just scoot this off to the side. If I want to make, say I don't think that this the dark blue is dark enough. If I wanna make an even darker blue, I can grab some of that blue, put it up here in my lid, wash my brush out, and then grab a black or a gray and add that in there. Now maybe that's a little bit too dark. Maybe I don't quite have enough blue in there. So I'll grab some more and keep mixing and playing around. Now, one thing that can be really helpful at this stage too is having a little piece of tester paper off to the side because you'll notice when I put it down, it looks different than when I was mixing it up in here. So if you want to be really exact about your colors, you can test them off to the side. Um, and you'll notice here my uh, wax resist for my stars are starting to pop up. If you start applying these colors and they're just not quite moving enough, you might need to add a little bit more water. If they're moving a little bit too much, like mine here are starting to puddle a little bit, you can grab a paper towel and dab that up. That's actually called lifting because it's gonna lift up the water, but it'll lift the watercolor with it also. So you wanna be a little bit uh, careful, try not to apply too much. Um, so that's how you use pan watercolor. You might also have a type of watercolor um, that you have to squeeze out of a tube. So in that case, you'll need some kind of paint palette here. Um, and then when you squeeze it into the tube, it'll be really, really thick. But to get it watered down to where you want it, you might just need to add a little bit more water. Um, so right here, this yellow is still a little thicker than I want it. So maybe I need to put it over here and add a little bit more water to it to get nice and light. You'll notice any um, time that you have lots of paint but not very much water, your watercolor will be really dark. Any time that you have a lot of water and not too much paint, your watercolor will be nice and light. So maybe I can dab that up here to show you how nice and light that is. You wanna be careful though. If I dabbed my yellow too close to my blue, Blue and yellow together make a green, which can be beautiful, but I probably don't want too much green in my sky. So maybe by my yellow, I'll keep more of the warmer colors. Like maybe I'll dab some orange here in between the pink and the yellow. And I'm just gonna keep working here, keep dabbing colors on here um, and fill up my whole night sky. So you can just keep working, keep adding colors all around. Um, you'll notice I tried to kind of keep things that I thought would mix together well next to each other. For example, I wouldn't put an orange next to a blue 
um, anything opposite of each other on the color wheel that's called a complement but if they mix together they make browns and grays which can be a little bit uh, unpleasant but this is your night sky you can be experimental and just kind of dab in the colors however you think could be interesting um, so I'm gonna keep dabbing on here um, just keeping in mind that if it starts to dry up a little bit and it's not uh, really flowing the way I want, I might just need a little bit more water. Um, if I'm starting to see my brush strokes as I put it down, that probably means that it got um, a little bit too, too dry for this flowy technique that we want. Um, anytime that you wanna have a really controlled uh, way to work with watercolor, that's when you really want um, the more dry paper. If you really want the watercolor to kind of flow um, and blend into each other, that's when you want a wetter watercolor paper here. So if you are putting colors down and they're not really moving, you could brush over it with water or you could pull out a squirt bottle with just regular water in it. Um, you could also use a squirt bottle with uh, rubbing alcohol and that will uh, make colors kind of break apart and do some kind of interesting things. But that's definitely one of those experimental techniques because you don't know exactly what's gonna happen with it. Um, so speaking of experimental techniques, once you have um, your sky completely covered and you know you're not gonna touch it anymore, that's when you can pull out um, salt. So I'm just using regular kitchen salt here. You can actually use any type of salt. Um, the bigger salt uh, tends to make big crystal shapes. The little salt tends to make like kind of more fine little bursts of color. So what I do is I shake a little bit of salt into my hand um, and then I just sprinkle it everywhere that it's wet. This technique doesn't work on dry watercolor and I've noticed that um, on really, really wet spots of watercolor, you might not get as interesting of bursts because it's just a little too wet. Um, the water really um, dissolves it. So it kind of has to be in between, um, but this is another one of those things that you can kind of experiment with and see uh, what types of salt give you the best technique, um, how wet your paper is when you get the best uh, results. So you can try this out a couple different ways. Um, and I'm just gonna leave that salt there. Once that's on there, I wanna let it dry completely. If you got any salt on the bottom down here, you can just brush that off. You don't really wanna paint over the salt. It's bad for your brushes. So let that all dry up there. And while that's drying, we can go ahead and decide what we want for our landscape down here. Um, below our horizon line, I'm thinking I just want it to look uh, maybe like night or shadows, or if you want it to look maybe more like a snowy landscape. Um, snow is usually mostly white, but it's got like a couple little shadows in it. So you could have uh, little shadows coming off from the trees or something like that. Um, but I'm probably gonna add a little bit more shadow than that. You wanna be really careful here when you're painting wet next to the wet. If I get too close here, my sky might bleed into my landscape. So I can either leave a little line there or wait for it all to dry. You could even grab a hair dryer or something and dry it off. Um, I'll just leave a little line and be careful here though. So I'm just gonna kind of loosely dab in some color here, um, some gray, and then I'll add darker shadows in after. But I don't want my shadows to be too distinct, so I'll just let them kind of bleed in here, almost like they're just, just showing up a little bit. Um, and this is something that you can play around with. You definitely don't have to do uh, night, you know, dark shadows like this. I like the contrast of the black against the dark sky, but say you had a lot of black up in your sky here, maybe you wanna do something different down here. So this is, you know, your art, make it how you want. Um, anytime that I'm playing around with different art techniques like this, I like to, you know, just get experimental. It's just paper. Uh, you can always play around with it some more and see what happens. So feel free to keep playing, ar playing around with this. If you want to do uh, more salt down here after you're done, you can do that too. Um, but what I would, recommend is let it all completely dry before you try to pull off the masking tape. The masking tape um, can, when if your paper's wet, it can try to rip it a little bit. When you are pulling off the masking tape, just try and keep it as sharp of an angle as possible and then that'll help prevent ripping. If you do start getting some ripping when you pull it off, though, just start pulling from the other angle and you should be okay. All right, 
So that's what I have to show for you today. If you wanted to add in um, some extra materials that you have, if you have watercolor pencils or watercolor crayons, those can be a lot of fun. You could actually uh, draw the trees with watercolor pencils or crayons if you have them, or just kind of um, mix them in with the other colors and uh, add some swirls and streaks and things like that. Um, they're a lot of fun because you can either draw with them like regular uh, crayons and pencils and then brush over them with water, or you can use them on the wet paper um, and you can actually draw onto your wet painting. So that can be a ton of fun to play around with. Um, there's lots of ways to get creative with this technique. So if you try it out yourself, I would love to see what you've done. I can't hold up my finished piece because it's taped to my desk still waiting to dry. But here's another one that I did earlier. Um, if you can see that uh, I taped down the edges, but then instead of painting over the whole thing with um, water, I actually tried to make it as circular as possible. You can see it's not exactly a perfect circle, but um, it was kind of fun just to see where the paint went within that circle. Cause everywhere that I brushed the water on, the paint just kind of went, but everywhere that the water wasn't, it stayed nice and white. So that was a lot of fun to experiment with. I'd love to see what you do. Um, one last big thanks to the North Dakota Council on the Arts. They've been super supportive, um, getting art out from artists to people that would like to do art also. So. Um, that's been a lot of fun to be able to share what I like to do with you. Um, and I can't wait until it gets a little bit nicer out and we can uh, go out and be inspired by nature a little bit. So look forward to sharing that kind of stuff with you guys in the future. So thanks so much.